Ladies and gentlemen, there is a riff between Netanyahu and Biden, and they said it is actually getting worse. But I'm not surprised. I think the last Democratic administration, Obama, it was some issues there too. I think the two of them were barely speaking. So I'm not surprised at all. But you know what, y'all? No matter what kind of riff these two leaders got, I bet you it won't turn that money off. That money is going to continue to flow over to Israel. All right. So, you know, there's a lot of people these days that are very upset with Joe Biden, with his position in the war in Gaza. So there are critics hitting him from all sides. And, you know, uh, there's talk and chatter about how it's going to cost him a lot of voters. But, you know, nobody's going to impact him like the voters in the black community. It, there, There is no other group that can boycott him that will have that same impact. Let's be real. So they're saying that there are critics on all sides, of course, on the right, including the Republican Party, feel that Biden isn't doing enough to clearly support Israel. They said Biden is too squeamish about Palestinian suffering, which despite nearly half a year of Israeli onslaught, they pin squarely on Hamas. And we know when it started because they sure won't let us forget. And some, especially those who champion uh, former President Donald Trump, um, they said they resent Biden's symbolic gestures to restore balance to the U.S.-Israeli relation. And, you know, they've been calling for ceasefires and they've been trying to also get humanitarian aid in there. And that's been a nightmare from what I'm reading about what's going on over there. So, they're saying, you know, it's still ongoing violence over there. And I mean, it's a war. So, of course, it, it is going to be violent. So U.S. officials and their Arab counterparts are meeting over the potential outlines of a truce that can be brokered between Israel and Hamas. Over the weekend, Vice President Harris called on Hamas to accede to the terms being floated in order for there to be an immediate ceasefire. She also said there are no excuses for Israel not to do more to allow aid into starved, battered Gaza, where reports are mounding of babies dying of malnutrition and disease. So... This weekend, Washington, the growing tensions between the White House and Netanyahu are coming to the fore. Biden may offer Israel a bear hug and support in wake of October 7th, but he is increasingly keeping the embattled Israeli prime minister at arm's length. Instead, the administration officials are meeting with Netanyahu's uh, rival Benny Gantz, who is also a member of the country's wartime cabinet. So it looked like that person, Gantz, arrived in Washington for meetings on Monday and Tuesday with the administration, including Harris, as well as Democratic and Republican lawmakers. So... <clears throat> I guess they're trying to come to some kind of conclusions on stopping the war over there, but are, you know, calling a ceasefire. And I don't know. I don't think Joe Biden is the one that can do that. I mean, it may, he might be able to do it, but it's not going to be one of those things done immediately. It doesn't seem like it, you know, but it's amazing how, there is a rift between these leaders, but y'all, that rift is not bad enough 
to the point where the U.S. won't fund them. They're still taking, including our tax dollars and funding all of these wars everywhere, you know? So you got to look at all of these places they have included. So now you got aid going to Gaza. You got them funding the war. You got them funding Ukraine. And Taiwan is now in the mix and they're getting money. And it's almost like everybody is getting aid. And the U.S. want to know why their debt is going up a trillion dollars every 100 days. These folks don't do nothing but keep conflict going. And they it never ends. It never ends. They're going to always be spending money on conflicts and wars, y'all. As long as these folks are in charge, it will never, ever end. You can best believe that. They don't know what peace on earth is. And they're not looking for peace on earth either. You know, I came to that conclusion even when I was real young. These folks don't want no peace on earth. They make tons of money off of these wars and sending money a half a world away and just sending it everywhere. Yeah, that's their thing. And that's always been their thing. The more wars they got, the more money they can dig in their wallets and find. It's just amazing. And, you know, the U.S. is not going to turn anybody away from a foreign source. So if you're a foreigner, you got a war going on, America got some dollars for you. That's how they are. And, you know, and then they're trying to talk all this post-war stuff. Well, there is no post-war if the war is still active, actively going on. And then you got leadership that's stubborn and they are not going to, they don't even want you to say the word ceasefire to them. They don't want you to even say it. So now you got the Arab community here in America refusing to vote for Joe Biden over his stance on the war. And y'all know where he stands with the black community. He hasn't done anything. So nobody is trying to vote for him there. So he got problems no matter how you look at it. But like I said, nobody's vote is going to impact him more than ours if we withhold it, which a lot of people are saying they're going to do. But y'all, tell me what you think about this alleged rift that's going on between Netanyahu and Biden. You know, just the nature of these two men, I, I would think y'all would get along just fine. I'm just saying. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace family.